Hi there, I'm Rue. Welcome to my video. Yet again, we venture into the darker sides of Reddit, of let's not meet. I have some great stories for you guys. Beautiful car. The meat man. Fan man? Witch in the woods. Ted Bundy? And dog sense. But first, this video shout out goes to Catbra with your comment. Well, hey, listening to this while playing WoW, and what do I hear? Yes, can confirm, greatest game ever. I am so excited for August. <laughs> Just a heads up, I'm a stream playing it. <gasps> so if you're excited to see that, do say check it out when it happens. Yes. <laughs> Anywho, let's get to the creepy. Enjoy if you dare. You have a beautiful car by outrageous weakness. I can't remember a time I was more frightened of a stranger. Up until recently, I worked at a call center located on the far north end of my highway, near the interstate. There's some neighborhoods along the main road going west, but as it approaches the interstate, the suburbs open up into large buildings and warehouses, with one fire station and a gas station. The lights along the road are rarely on, and since it was Sunday night, most of the office and warehouse buildings were dark. The only light came from the gas station and the fire station in the distance. While working at the call center, my shift normally ran from 11.30 a.m. to 8 p.m. That Sunday, however, I picked up some extra hours due to having been sick and got out at 10 p.m. Normally, I get gas on my way to work, but that day, I had been running late. The area was quiet, the streets pretty much empty, and I stopped at the gas station an intersection over. I pulled up to the pump, swiped my card, and began filling up my car. A 1998 Buick LeSabre in champagne in beautiful shape. I was sort of zoned out, thinking to myself about how dark it was up there, when I looked up toward the road, and my heart leapt into my throat. There, only about three feet away, a man was stopped facing towards me, having come up from the road. He looked as surprised as I felt, stopped dead in his tracks, his eyes wide. He was on the older side, maybe in his fifties, with gray hair and a wrinkled face. He looked like one of those dad models from L.L. Bean catalogs, the ones dressed up for a brisk winter hike. But, in his right hand, held tightly and brandished, was a screwdriver. I stared for a minute. He stared back. Then, he gave a nervous smile, creeping forward. That's a beautiful car you have there, he said, and immediately, there were so many alarms going through my head. I have my phone set to call 911 when the emergency call button on the bottom left is pressed, and you better believe my thumb was hovering over it in the pocket of my jacket. Yeah, it is, isn't it? I returned, and turned my body away from him, keeping my head faced towards him. I was sweating, my mouth was dry. He paced back and forth on the other side of my car, asking bizarre, specific questions. How many miles does it have? Any work done on it recently? Etc, etc. I answered shortly, not moving, not looking away. Not even when the hose clicked, my tank full. Then, he started talking about his car. As he spoke, he gestured toward the gas station, over and over only with his free hand. He moved closer with every pace, and I felt trapped between him in front of me and the hose behind me. I didn't look over, only nodded, heartbeat pounding in my ears. Finally, to my relief, a car pulled up on the other side of the pump. Abruptly, the man said, well, I better get going. He grinned and sauntered away. I felt chills running through me. And as my gaze followed him, my blood ran cold. There were no cars in the parking lot. 
This only happened a few months ago, and I still shiver thinking about it. To this day, I'm convinced he was only pointing to get me to look away, so he could lunge. To that creepy screwdriver dude, let's not ever meet again. I'm very glad you were that alert. I think he would have pounced as soon as he got an opportunity to do so. The meat man. Okay, so probably around last year in the summer, me and my sister were home alone, and the day was going extra slow. We were waiting for the mailman to drive through because we were waiting for a package. An odd white van pulls up in front of our house. There was only windows in the front, and there was no label on the van. A man comes out of the can and comes to the door knocking. I had to take our dogs to a different room while my sister answered. She told me the man was selling meat? It was just strange to hear he was just driving around selling meat out of the back of a van. My sister declined, not wanting to go near the van. He wanted her to go to the van to look at the meat. She comes back inside and the guy leaves the porch and to his car. It was odd, since he was selling things he should have gone to our neighbors, but he just drove away not stopping anywhere? For about a week, the van drove past the house, not stopping anywhere. Odd meat man, let's never meet. Well, that whole thing gave me an eerie feeling like he was targeting you, like you were two young girls home alone. Who knows what he wanted to do with you. Fan g Man? A creepy fan of my friend. This is not my story, but one of my friend's story. We will call her Amanda. This happened about two to four years ago. Can't really remember much. I just managed to get all the details from Amanda, who had written it down in one of her diaries. Anyway, Amanda used to be a vlogger. She had a small channel with only about 3,000 to 4,000 subscribers. It was all right after a while. One day, she decided to go on a walk around her street and talk about her reaching the milestone of 4,000 subscribers. The video had started with her inside of her house, and after a quick intro, she went outside and began walking and talking. She had made sure that during the editing, she would blur out any addresses or faces of people that would come by, except she hadn't blurred out one important thing, her street name, which popped out at just the corner of the screen. For some information, she had done multiple videos where you could see what her house looked like. She also said that she lived in a certain country. She made sure not to give out a lot of information, but she would often slip up, like saying the city name. When she began to say it, though, she would stop. Continuing on, she had this one subscriber, which you could say was the dedicated one. He was one of Amanda's first subscribers and commented on every single one of her videos. The first few comments were all right, just some heartwarming messages for her or some humble critique on the editing or other things. Later on, he would comment things about Amanda's looks and would say, God, I wish you were my girlfriend. In some other of his comments, he would just rant about how horrible his current girlfriend is and say he would like Amanda as his girlfriend. Of course, he received sympathy in the replies. Then, the comments got creepy. He would talk about sexual things he wanted to do to Amanda, and even talk about wanting to know her address and kidnapping her. Amanda even had to report and remove those certain comments. But, the comments kept coming, since he must have been using alter ego accounts. After she posted the video, she hadn't realized her mistake. Only after a week or so later, when she was about to head to her part-time job and felt something wasn't right. She moved the curtains in one of the windows and saw a guy in his late 20s or his 30s. He looked shabby and was staring hungrily at the door. What do you want? Amanda called out after opening the door a crack. The guy stared at her and gave her a smile that indicates you shouldn't come near them. And after that, he began spouting out information that only me, Amanda, and her close circle of friends knew. 
Amanda knew that this must be the creepy commenter. So she locked the door and went to call the police. Why are you locking me out? I'm your biggest fan, he shouted. But Amanda ignored him and dialed the police station's number. When they arrived, the guy was gone. This continued for many days. The guy would just stare at the door with a hungry smile. And this would prevent Amanda from even getting anywhere. One day, though, when he arrived at 4 a.m. in the morning, the police was right around the corner, so they went in and arrested him before he was able to run away. Later on, Amanda found out that this guy had been stalking her for quite some time, and when his apartment got inspected, they found several photos of Amanda, and not just screenshots of her from her videos, but sometimes photos of her walking around the street, buying groceries, and the most creepy yet, sleeping. The guy had also stalked multiple girls, all of them good looking, of course, and was planning to stalk me and our friends. Amanda deleted her channel after that whole ordeal and even moved in with one of her other friends. So, creepy stalker guy, for the sake of Amanda, me, and the rest of humanity, let's not meet. I feel like this is the exact reason why I don't post pictures of my cats because there are some awesome people out there. Y'all are like awesome people, but there's also like that one person who's completely nuts and I don't want them to become like irrationally attached to my babies. No. The Witch in the Woods this happened a little over 20 years ago. I was about 10 years old, and my sister was 6. We grew up in a small town, raised only by our hard-working mother. It started when school was nearly finished for the year. The nights were late because my sister was up all night crying about a witch. Anyways, my mother started receiving odd calls once in a while at work that just said, I need one of your children. Mom figured it was some sort of stupid prank and ignored it. But then she started receiving calls daily. Eventually, she was receiving a call most nights at our home. She reported it to the police, and they said whoever was calling was using random payphones and there wasn't much they could do about it. So she had both her work and home number changed. One night, around 10 or so, there was a frantic knock on our door. Mom looked out through the window and saw a lady with long hair in her 60s. Not knowing her, Mom went near the locked door and asked what she wanted. The lady asked if she could come in because she was in a car accident. Mom said she would call the police for her and told her to wait outside. There was a pause. The lady said, no, don't call the cops. Mom thought this was strange and started walking to the phone. Immediately, again, a banging on the door. Mom ran to the phone and looked out the window to see the lady staring at her. She coldly said, Dorothy Margaret, I want one of your children. She kept repeating it until Mom noticed flashing lights of police approaching and she left. The police searched everywhere, kept a car at her house each night for a week, nothing. A few weeks later, summer finally started, and my sister wasn't having the nightmares anymore about the witch. We were at one of my baseball games, and my mother was talking to a teacher at my sister's school and telling her what happened. The teacher said, Sounds like your stepmother. Mom looked back confused and said she doesn't have a stepmother. The teacher's face turned white. A while ago, a lady in her 60s would come watch the children play at lunch. She said she was my mother's stepmom and liked to watch my sister at lunch. She reported again to the police and they checked camera footage and sure enough, on a faraway park bench, there was an old lady most lunch times. They noticed she was always coming from the woods, so the police did a search and found an old shanty shack type of place with old blankets and fire pit and pictures she drew of us. That was the last summer we ever heard of her. When summer was ending, my sister started having the nightmares of the witch again. 
Mom asked why she was getting scared again, and she said, Because she comes to school and watches us. The witch was the old lady. Let's not meet old witch from the woods who wants children. I really hope they found her and caught her. That sounds like one of those ladies who will like attack a pregnant woman for like an infant. Anyone else get the creepy feeling like they might have to check if there was any children that went missing around that time in that place? Maybe that's why she stopped? Ted Bundy? Man who wanted to use my mother's telephone. This is technically my mother's story, although I am also in it. When I was four months old in 1994, my mom and dad had been having money issues, and as a result, he would often work late. One late Wednesday night, around 9 p.m., there was a knock at the door, and my mom put me down in the living room and went to see if it was dad, having forgotten his keys. She opened the door without looking properly, and a man was standing on the doorstep. He smiled at her and asked if he could use her phone, as his car had broken down. Flustered, she said yes, and walked backwards a little to let him get to the telephone that lived on the hall table. However, he didn't stop at the table, and kept walking up the hall towards her. She asked him what he wanted, pointed at the phone saying it was right there, and said her husband was getting out of the shower. This is where it starts to get really creepy. He stopped walking, cocked his head to one side, said he didn't hear the shower running, and then gave her a really big smile. He added that he thought it was just her at home right now, wasn't it? Mom said at this point, all she could think about was trying to make it to me, maybe dropping me out a window, or trying to get us into the bathroom that had a lock praying to any god or gods that were listening that dad would pull up in the driveway. Anything. And then she heard a growl. Mom had been out getting the washing in from the outside laundry before she'd gone to check on me in the living room and had left the back door open a crack. Our Doberman, Pride, had gotten into the house and had walked out of the kitchen into the hallway between mom and this man. She started growling and showing all her teeth. And mom told him to get out now before she set the dog on him. Apparently he freaked out and backed out of the house before taking off down the street. Dad got home about 20 minutes later. It felt like an eternity according to my mom. The man was never caught and we never saw him again. And I really hope I never do, even though I wouldn't know him if I saw him. Pride lived till she was 13 and was the most spoiled dog ever. I don't know what would have happened to mom or me without her. I, I think it's pretty clear that that man was up to no good, and I pray that he didn't get to anyone else. Dog sense. Guy my dog doesn't like? Let's not meet. This happened last fall, around November. I was taking my dog She's actually my mom's dog, but Sissy spoils her a lot. For a nice, long walk, which we both needed. I live in an area that suffered a major disaster around this time, and this was the first walk in our neighborhood we had been able to take since it happened. My husband would usually go on walks with us, but he was recovering from a severe illness indirectly related to the other events. Now, I never go on a walk without the dog or my husband. Mom's dog is loving the walk, until we loop onto the main road. It was still light out when we started walking, but it got dark around here quick around the time of year that this occurred, and there were no street lights due to the disaster. As we were walking, these two men are approaching and heading in the opposite direction, with no way to avoid them, and something seemed a little off. Now, I watch too much investigation discovery, forensic files, and the such for my own good, so I'm always anxious with strangers when I'm walking the dog. But I also reminded myself that this is post-disaster, that power was only restored a few weeks ago. Those may be the only clothes they have left. They may not be able to shower or shave, etc. So I calmed myself down a little and kept walking. I tried not to project how I was feeling so as to not appear fearful to the dog 
or these men. As I passed, I did a simple nod and a small smile. You know, the one we do instinctively to acknowledge another person's existence and that says, Yes, you are here, I see you, hello, and goodbye. I had no intention of stopping. One of the men, however, took this as an invitation to stop me and try to strike up a conversation. I tried to walk away, but the other man just stood there in a way that I couldn't pass and watched us the whole time without talking. My anxiety and weariness increased. Keep in mind, this entire interaction takes place in the span of about 30 seconds. Well, hey there. Hi. What a pretty dog. Thanks. What's this around her nose? Does she bite? It's a head collar. It keeps her from tugging on her leash and hurting herself. I did not answer the question about her biting, as my paranoia and caution told me to leave that one hanging. While this was happening, he kept trying to pet my mom's dog. Now, usually, my mom's dog is all tail wags, hand licking, and sure, pet me when she is with my husband and I. My mom's dog has serious anxiety and separation issues, but my husband and I have some very alpha personalities. We have also worked with her to make her more comfortable and reduce her anxiety. I digress. Not today. When this guy was trying to pet her, she was trying to hide behind me without wrapping me in the leash. With her tail between her legs, her ears pressed down on her head, and her back hairs on end. This is not a normal reaction, and my fight or flight or freeze kicked in hard. I'm a fighter until I can fly, by the way. I am not one for panic. As my sympathetic nervous system kicked in and the adrenaline started to get dumped into my blood, the chatty guy asked me a question that sent chills down my spine. Do you live around here? No, just here to help. Have a nice day. And the dog and I started walking away. The other man moved out of the way because the dog was now closer to him. And she is a good-sized dog who looks like she has a little pit in her. And she does, among other things. Some people are uncomfortable around dogs her size and with some of her features. I spent the rest of the time walking home, casually looking back over my shoulder as I unwrapped the leash from around me. I took a very long and roundabout way home and only bothered to go back home when I was sure they weren't following me. Luckily, they kept walking in the other direction and did not follow me. When I got home, I took her leash off and held her and loved her for a good five minutes, telling her how much of a good girl she is and how much I love her because I truly felt that her reaction, her presence, and her unique muttness made a massive difference in how it all played out. Long story short, guy my dog doesn't like, let's not meet. That is so creepy. Animals can tell. Animals can really tell if something is wrong with someone. I've actually had a similar experience and this is a crazy story because my cat was, uh, it was when she was walking around free. Now I walk my cat on a leash, but before we used to have her walk free because that's pretty common where I live. And I was looking for her because I couldn't find her. And I'm walking through these bushes and out of nowhere, this woman just pops out of the bushes and she's like, oh my God, are you, what are you doing? And I'm like, I'm um, looking for my cat oh really which cat is it and i'm like oh it looks like this your cat is evil your cat has been terrorizing the neighborhood and i'm like wait what what do you mean my cat is the snuggliest loveliest friendliest social butterfly in the universe so i knew for a fact that this was just not the case and i was just like um my cat like that does not sound like my cat at all but this lady was just adamant that my cat was like a danger to society or something and because i was afraid of how she might react if she saw my cat because she thought it was a bad cat we decided to go to this lady's house because she told me where she lived because she like was, lived in the house behind the bushes or something. So we go to her house with my cat and we ring the doorbell and this man opens and the craziest thing happens. My cat, who's like the friendliest ever, was terrified. She literally 
hid behind me and backwards tried to hide under a car, under a parked car. I've never seen her react like that. She's not afraid of men. She's, she's not afraid of anything. She's like super sociable. But this man, she just saw him and she was immediately terrified. And I knew right then that there was something severely wrong with this man. And it got really weird because we asked like, oh, this is this is our cat. Like your wife told us that she thinks it's a danger to society or something. And the guy literally said he doesn't have a wife. And we we're just like, what do you mean? We just saw this lady in your backyard pop out of the bushes. And he's just like, no, I don't have a wife. And he was acting really weird. So of course we leave. My cat is terrified. I have to crawl under a car to get her. There was something up with this man. Lo and behold, fast forward a little bit later, a cat is hit by a car in the neighborhood. And guess who finds her? In his trash can. And he has this amazing, extraordinary story about how he saw a white van drive past and dump this bag with the dead cat in it in his garbage can and just zoom off. Bizarre, right? Can't say that he did it, don't know. Except the next year it happened again. I kid you not, he says the exact same thing happened again with another dead cat that he found mysteriously in his trash can and that a white van had just driven past and just dumped it in there. Except this time, there were witnesses. Someone saw him. There were these two kids playing nearby who had seen him walk from his house holding a dead mangled cat before he threw it away in the trash can. Yeah. That's the reason I don't have my cat walk free anymore, even though it's completely normal where I live. Because there are like disturbed people in the world, and I am not about to take that chance. And that guy is still my neighbor. So, <laughs> let's just say the fact that there were witnesses that had an opposite story of what he was saying, all of a sudden, nothing more suspicious happened there. I'm, I'm starting to think that he was like, oops, better not attract more attention to myself. Serial killer material, I'm just saying right now. Creepy AF. Ugh. That's all I have for you guys this time. I hope you were properly scared. If you like these types of scary stories, do comment below. If you have some stories of your own, scary or not, do submit them on my website. Link in the description. I post every Friday, so do subscribe, you know. Come back! Special thanks to my Patreon patrons, especially you, Catbra. It was actually a coincidence that I chose your comment only after I had chosen it that I realized it was posted by my new patron. Imagine that. You just happen to be awesome in both your patroning and your comments.